I search for God and see vast and strange visions. I am not hallucinating. I am encountering new concepts of God. But are new concepts of God good concepts of God? Why do religious strivings lead to theological complexity? Can God be parsed too tightly? I'm struck by the fine difference between pantheism, where the world is God and God is the world, and panentheism, where the world is in God, but God is more than the world. What's here to learn about God? Is panentheism anyway credible? Is the world in God? I'm Robert Lawrence Kuhn, and Closer to Truth is my journey to find out. Pantheism intrigues philosophers of religion. Why? Why do some people who think deeply about God believe that the world resides within the being of God, but that the being of God exceeds the bounds of the world? I recall what philosopher Philip Clayton, then at Harvard Divinity School, told me. Panentheism is a, a school in the study of God, theology, in the last roughly 200 years that tries to bring together the best features of traditional theism and some traditional thoughts about pantheism and to see if a third thing could emerge as the fusion. So panentheism, briefly defined, is the notion that the world exists within the divine, though God is also more than the world. It makes the radical move of saying that natural regularities and natural forces are an expression of the divine. It's an ambitious claim. Can panentheism harmonize biblical monotheism with pantheism? Bridge the divide between science and religion? Ambitious, it's audacious. Panentheism makes an extravagant claim. How to assess it? I go to England to the University of Birmingham to attend a workshop on alternative concepts of God. I begin with a Dutch philosopher of theology who focuses on the deep meaning of the body of God, Marcel Sarro. Marcel, this new concept of panentheism seems to be gathering steam among theologians. How do you look at, on this development of panentheism? Panentheism literally means that everything, everything that is, exists within God. But, on the other hand, that God is greater than the whole of reality. God is transcendent. If you look, for instance, at the question, what happened when God created the world, a, a world that is, in many senses, independent of God, then this means that uh, God, as it were, gave a form of power to something beside him. We believe, for instance, that um, human beings have a, have a certain kind of, of, of freedom, also with respect to God, can take their own decisions, and it was God who gave them this power, but by giving this power to them, he, he, he also decided that he wouldn't use his ability to determine everything. Okay, it, this sounds contradictory. Traditionally, in theism, as I understand it, that there's a radical distinction between God and the world. The tradition has often overemphasized the transcendence uh, of God. Transcendence and immanence are two sides of one coin. Uh, if you look, for instance, at the Old Testament, and you try to find out in, in what terms the transcendence of God is articulated there, it's in terms of God's holiness. And if you try to find out how God's holiness is articulated, it's in terms like the Holy One of Israel. So on the one hand, you have the transcendence, the Holy One, and on the other hand, you immediately have the imminence of Israel. So. God is both imminent 
and transcendent at the same time. Define imminence. Imminence means that God is present in the world and God is larger than the world. He is greater. The tradition has sometimes over-articulated the independence of the world from God. At the same time, the tradition has also held that all through its existence, the world is dependent on God. There's this idea of the continuing creation. So if at any moment God would decide that he's had it with the world, (laughs) it's no longer worthwhile, this project, everything might immediately collapse. So all all through its existence, creation uh, continues to be dependent on God. And even though it has a relative freedom with respect to God, this is not an absolute freedom. To make that extra step, that, that's what gets me, that extra step to say the world is part of God. So once it's created, uh, it's part of God. So if it would go out of existence, then part of God's self would disintegrate. Does that make sense? By creating, God did not extend himself, so to say. He, he didn't become larger. He didn't become more perfect. Um, what he did do was that he shared his abundant goodness with a world in which he was, was and still is intimately involved. Now, if the world would uh, stop to exist, this wouldn't mean that God would in some way become less, but it would mean that God would no longer share from his abundance in this particular way. It sounds like you are a weak panentheist. I probably am. (laughs) If you think about it rationally, this is perhaps the clearest way of describing the relationship between God and the world. To Marcel, panentheism best expresses how a creator God could be intimately imminent in the world and utterly transcendent beyond the world and to be both without contradiction. The transcendent part that again. It's similar to traditional theism, where God creates the cosmos as a wholly distinct existing thing. The imminent part, that's harder to penetrate. It's where God is continuously creating or sustaining the cosmos, every place at every moment. Can comparing panentheism with traditional pantheism help. I speak with an expert on pantheism, an American philosopher from Australia, Michael Levine. I think there's a a world of difference between pantheism on the one hand and panentheism and and, and, uh, theism on the other. Panentheism suggests that uh, some people interpret it, the world as God's body. Uh, Some people say that the world is an aspect of God, although God transcends the world as such. I think it's wanting to have your cake and eat it too, because you, you're maintaining the principal things that the pantheist wants to maintain, which is the sheer eminence of, uh, of the divine. Panentheists like theists maintain a distinction, a transcendent distinction. And panentheists also believe, of course, in a personal God. That's crucial, uh, a conscious being that God is. So so you would see a closer link between classical theism and panentheism than between panentheism and classical pantheism. Much closer. So what are the core characteristics of a panentheist that are similar to a pantheist? What, What are they looking to pantheism to help them with in their theistic problems? Well, they would say, for example, that God is not uh, utterly transcendent, that there's an eminent aspect of God. So it brings God closer to, uh, to the world as such. And uh, look, this satisfies a kind of uh, an emotional need that we have for being closer to, to God. Now, they'll give you all sorts of arguments uh, as to why and how panentheism is preferable to a theism. But I think a pantheist will say, well, just look at what you're actually doing and uh, you can see why it's no longer necessary. Anything, any plausible pantheistic worldview now has to be consonant with a scientific worldview. But it's very important to realize that a scientific worldview is not the same as a scientistic worldview. It's not a view of the, of the world as such that addresses each and every problem and can give you uh, total answers to questions about 
uh, value as such, about what we should be doing, about normative questions, uh, they're still very important and big differences. But where pan pantheism has an edge, neither panentheism nor theism uh, is, pantheism does take a scientific worldview uh, uh, seriously uh, as such. And that, by the way, is something, of course, that theism, theism never has recovered from Darwin, and it never will. To Michael, while panentheism brings God closer to the world than does theism, panentheism still maintains the transcendence and personal God of theism, which makes panentheism, in his view, less viable than pantheism. As for me, if God were not transcendent, if what I'd see of God, the world, is all I'd get of God, I'd be disappointed. But one philosopher tells me that panentheism can generate the greatest possible vision of reality. The co-organizer of the Alternative God Workshop, Yujin Nagazawa. Yujin, and you asked me to think about modal panentheism. What is that? My favorite definition of God is the Anselmian one. And according to this definition, God is something than which no greater can be thought. And I like to think that this is an uncontroversial definition, at least once you accept monotheism. So if you can think of a being that is greater than your God, then your God is not the real God. And now classical theists, they claim that the Anselmian God is an omniscient, omnipotent, and morally perfect creator. But I want to explore alternative ideas here. And one possible interpretation of the Anselmian concept is to say that God is the totality of all possible worlds, or all, all possible universes. There might be a universe that includes only mental properties or yeah. non-physical beings. And according to what I call modal panentheism, God is the totality of all possible universes. And the totality of all possible universes include all possible bodies of knowledge, and all possible forms of power, and all sorts of good things. So we could say that in one sense, the totality is omniscient, omnipotent, and morally perfect as well. And moreover, the totality of all possible universes exists necessarily. So in one sense, we could say that God is the creator of the totality as well, because the totality is a self-existent being. So because you're including within your category the whole thing that you've defined that becomes necessary? Yeah, so classical theists tend to say that God doesn't require his creator right. because he exists necessarily. So he's a self-existent being. And we can say something similar here. The totality of all possible worlds is basically logical space. So it exists necessarily. It doesn't require any creator. So it's not that there is some causal origin of the totality. The causal origin is not required. The structure of God being all possible logical universes uh, is very coherent with the Anselmian vision because you can't get greater than that. Mm. Where it seems to be deficient, at least compared to traditional uh, theism, is that God is not transcendent. Okay, so here's panentheism. Panentheism says that God is not identical to this universe. This universe is a part of God. Yes. And there is something beyond this universe. Yes. And our modal panentheism said something similar. God is not identical to this specific universe. This specific universe is part of the totality of all possible universes, all, or all possible but worlds. You, but you are saying that God is, is the equivalent to all possible universes, mm -hmm. not beyond all possible universes. That's correct. So that's a difference. Yeah, so in that sense, you might want to call this view a form of pantheism. Pantheism can be defined in yes. various different ways. Yes. One way of defining it is to say that God is identical to this universe. Yes. And if we adopt that definition, modal panentheism is a version of panentheism rather than pantheism. But there is another definition of panthe pantheism. There always is. Which, <laughs> yes, that's right. Uh, and according to this definition, uh, God is identical to reality rather than this specific oh. universe. Mm -hmm. And reality could include many other universes or many other possible worlds. And once we accept that definition of pantheism, 
then my view is a version of pantheism. So your God, which is the largest possible God, uh, is still not beyond all the possibilities or existence of this logical space. There's nothing in your God beyond. My God is beyond this universe. This universe, this physical universe. And that's what the classical theists say as well. God is probably a spiritual existence that goes beyond the physical universe. So in that sense, my view is comparable with the yeah, classical Yeah, because universe. God can en encompass non-physical worlds in your definition. Right, that's right. So what, what is your gain? What's good about this view is that it explains a lot of things. So for example, there's a question of why there is something rather than nothing, or why there is this specific universe. Model panentheism can res uh, respond to this kind of uh, question. So for example, you could say that there is this universe because this universe is part of the totality of all possible universes. And you could also say that there is always something rather than nothing because the totality exists necessarily. And also you can explain why there is evil. And that's because the existence of evil uh, is a possible state of affairs. So it's included in the totality of all possible worlds. Eugen's modal panentheism is the claim that God is the totality of all possible worlds, multiple universes, non-physical worlds, logical spaces, literally everything. Outlandish? Bizarre? It does offer answers to otherwise unanswerable questions. Existence, self-existence, evil, our universe with human beings. But even so, wouldn't God be just another label for everything? Naming it God adds nothing new. If all that stuff exists, fine. But why call it God? God as a concept is owned, as it were, by traditional theists. How do they react to panentheism? I asked the professor of divinity at Cambridge, Sarah Coakley, an Anglican priest. She's attending the Alternative God workshop as a critic. Sarah, it used to be that my struggle was between theism, the existence of God, and a scientific atheism. Now I find myself in a blizzard of new ideas. That's what's bizarre about this conference, that it has a sort of suggestion of liberal preferentialism. If you don't like one kind of God, chuck it and try another. <laughs> and what's odd about that is that if God exists, one would presume that it would make a huge difference to your life. Believing in God isn't just choosing between various theoretical or abstract possibilities, but actually having a whole picture of your life transformed, embedded in practices. But if we want to really think seriously about why one would opt for panentheism over what is generally thought to be a classic Christian notion of God, then actually one of the first things you have to worry about is whether the people who are opting for panentheism are setting up a straw man when they're rejecting what they think it betters. What do they think the problem is? Well, they think that the classical scholastic god is distant, abstract, and above all, static. Because the presumption is that god is somehow unable to enter into or empathize with the sufferings and transformations of the created realm. When actually, on a classical Augustinian or Thomistic view, god is in absolutely no way noetically displaced from our created realm. In fact, God knows us more intimately than we even know ourselves. Is there a reaction against this so-called perfect being theology? Absolutely. That God, God is immutable, God uh, doesn't change, God is, is impassable, God is not affected emotionally. Yeah, I think that that is a set of misunderstandings of those characteristics. Oddly, if you begin to understand afresh what it is to talk about the classical scholastic God and not just an abstracted father God, but a God who is also the father of the son who suffered and died, then a lot of the objections, I think, fall away. But conversely, a rich form of panentheism 
can, I think, also be catered for. Some of the panentheists that I know seem to feel somehow that if they can bring all of the physical reality into God itself, it eliminates the need for supernatural um, interventions sure. in the world. I'm not saying that the problem of supernatural interventions um, isn't a severe one for any modernistic Christian believer. But I think there is equally a misunderstanding about the problem that such a supernatural intervention would cause. A classic mistake made is to presume that God is a sort of very big version of <laughs> us, um, but in the same, as it were, spectrum of reality. So God is an extraordinarily large personal being, bigger than any others and mm -hmm. responsible for the rest of us, but in some sense competing for space. And it was perhaps a natural reaction of Christian believers panicking in the face of the incursions <laughs> of science to try and leave some spaces which yeah. only God could fill. Whereas actually a more classic perception of God is that God is that without which there would be nothing at all. And therefore there is nothing from which God is separated, but equally nothing in which God isn't present. The vision that panentheism gives to us, I think is ultimately actually compatible with the theistic classical position rightly understood. To Sarah, a close and accurate reading of the classical God embeds all the apparent benefits of panentheism, especially God's intimate connection to the world, such that panentheism as an alternative God becomes unproductive. Why then the surge of panentheism among scholarly believers? Something must be amiss in traditional theism. One claim is that panentheism beats theism in harmonizing science and God. To test the claim, I visit a theologian of traditional theism who was trained as a scientist, Alistair McGrath. Well, I could easily find myself resonating with panentheism, but I'd understand it in a way that might need to be distinguished from other notions of panentheism. If you take a traditional Christian vision of God, which is very strongly Trinitarian, then God is present. There's this idea that God's spirit inhabits all things without in any way compromising the distinctiveness or indeed the transcendence of God. That's a, a traditional Christian belief. And what the doctrine of the Trinity is trying to do is to hold those together and say these are all all true at the same time of this God. So you can see how that could be made to fit with this, this specific form of panentheism. Okay, uh, but I isn't it also the case that traditional religion makes a distinction between the creator and the created, where panentheism denies that? And that, that's why I want to keep my distance from certain forms of panentheism. But the idea that God in some way inhabits or interpenetrates mm. nature, mm. I I have no difficulty with that. I would have difficulty if you began to say, and that means God is absorbed into nature, as if like water in a sponge. That for me just isn't the way things are, and in effect really radically truncates the transcendence of God. Mm. What I want to do is be able to hold together the idea of a transcendent God who is actively present in the natural world. And that's not what I think traditional notions of panentheism are saying. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so as you look at all these different uh, struggles of humanity to, uh, to try to find answers. Uh, I applaud that, even if the answers are diverse, and even if I don't agree with them. And I applaud it too. And that's why I say, well, look, we have all these answers, but maybe we need a bit of help. In other words, isn't, isn't the fact that we come up with so many answers and our reflection of our limitation in actually getting to the right answer. And so I find myself asking a very interesting question. What if the nature of God were such that he doesn't leave us to find him on our own, but tries to help us? I'd be surprised, appalled really, if any human belief system, any ism, turns out to be ultimate truth. Yet, if there is a God, or something like God, then panentheism may help hint what God may be like. Panentheism stresses God's imminence, 
God's profound and pervasive connection with the world, without diminishing God's transcendence, God's ineffable and majestic supremacy apart from the world. And if there is no God, then panentheism will be seen as yet another clever but false idea in humanity's futile struggle to find meaning when there is no meaning. In either case, God, no God, appreciating panentheism spotlights our quest to get closer to truth. For complete interviews and for further information, please visit closertotruth.com. This program was supported in part by a grant from the John Templeton Foundation.